That was back in the old Big East days. Miami beat Syracuse 17 to 10 in 2003, and that was a pretty good Miami team. Yeah, yeah, we did that, and also in 2001 and two, we had some blowout wins. Uh, had a blowout loss in 1999, which was Donovan McNabb's senior year, uh, his senior day game actually, uh, his last home game at the Carrier Dome. So that's something I wrote about in the question and answer as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, we used to play Syracuse every year when we were in the Big East. We were wearing these jerseys because I don't have an insignia, but these are Big East jerseys that I'm wearing now. Um, but yeah, we moved on to the ACC and we play each other, you know, once every decade, give or take. So it's a good little time, but you know, I think that we'll just kind of play this game on Sunday, Saturday, excuse me, uh, get a proper result for the University of Miami and just move on forward. Syracuse was last ranked in 2001, Cam. That's my stat for the night for you. And when I say 2001, I don't mean in the final poll, the final official poll at the end of the season. I mean in any week. Somebody laid that one on me this week that Syracuse was last ranked in 2001. And I told them I'm almost positive in stating as a counterpoint to that that there is no other school in the Power Five that can make that claim that has not been ranked at all. Maybe Iowa State, they do come to mind. Kansas ranked in the top five in the country in 2007, so throw them out. I know Kansas comes to mind immediately. Purdue's been good since then. Anybody, Illinois went to the Rose Bowl in 2007. Any bad program you can throw out there, I'm almost going to guarantee that they've been in the top 25 at least one week in 16 years. Not Syracuse. That is crazy. Wow. And for a, a, for a school with that kind of history, you know, you're talking Jim uh, Brown Jim Brown, and Ernie Davis and yep. all kinds of people. Uh, where Donovan McNabb, like we talked about, Rob Conrad, who wore the number 44 back then. Um, uh, Dwight Freeney uh, back in 2001 mm. and two, and got shut out by uh, Brian McKinney when he was going for the sack record. Um, Keith Bullock, who played in the league for years with Tennessee and with my Detroit Lions. Uh, all kinds of good players there, but man, re not even a single week in 16 years. Well, um, that is a, an interesting stat, and hopefully, uh, for Miami's sake, we're able to elongate that or continue that for Syracuse, because if Syracuse were to beat Miami, which I do not think is going to happen, but if they were, they're at 5-3, and three, having beaten number 2 and number 8 in back-to-back -back weeks. It's hard to not get votes or not get to the top 25 when you have that recent resume, you know, and Miami's played two national TV games back to back Syracuse. I'm oh, sorry. Clemson was Clemson with obviously, you know, a defending national champions and looking like they were going straight back to the playoff undefeated. Um, even though I know that Clemson lost last year, but it seemed as though they were going to go undefeated through the regular season this year, man. Yeah. Uh, this week could be if, what I don't think is going to happen happens the week that Syracuse breaks that streak. But again, excuse me again for Miami's sake. I hope that uh, Syracuse goes yet another week uh, without a ranking. I can't guarantee it, but Syracuse would probably break into the Mark Rogers TV top twenty-five because we present, of course, the more common sense, reasonable top twenty-five that actually makes sense. It's not based on perception or what we think the teams are going to do at the end of the season. It's based on the track record. So even if five and three, Clemson and Miami. Uh, in the win column, probably would break into the top 25, but I don't think that's going to happen either. 